Welcome to Data Science in Python. In this one, we're going to look at constant variances for ANOVA. If you haven't watched the previous ANOVA videos, you should probably try to do that because um, we're going to be quite busy with using the stuff from before. Okay, so before we're using from before we're using the fructose.csv data set, which is linked in the repository. We're going to read that in. We're going to run an ANOVA, and then we're going to look at the residuals. So I'm going to run all of this right now. If you've been following along with the videos, you should have all of this data. This should not be a problem for you in terms of having the data. So it should be pretty easy, or the data and the code. Oh, wait, I said, it says I have invalid syntax. Oh, wait, I didn't get all the comments. Yeah, I just ran everything real quick. Uh, let's see, here we go. Um Everything looks to be set. We've got our p-value. We noticed that there were differences across the fructose, across varieties. And now what we want to do is look at the constant variance assumption. We checked normalities last time. So what we're going to do is Levine's test. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, especially here, uh, because it's already packaged inside of SciPyStat. Okay, all you have to do is put in the data that you have. So we're going to actually look at two ways to do this. You just put in the groups that you have. So here we have FR1 uh, fructose. And let's see here. We just exactly like, almost exactly like um, doing the box plot. And then variety equals A. And then comma. You don't need the extra parenthesis that I messed up the last time with. Uh, and then why don't you just copy and paste this? This will make your life so much easier. So copy and paste, then copy and paste this. And let's see here, A, B, C, and D. This is the code. This is all we need to do. We put these uh, in here directly. We put the data in and we're looking to see whether or not they are uh, have constant variance. Okay, so let's just run this real quick and see what pops out. And here's the p-value. And uh, we have it. Bingo. But wait a minute. I didn't drag you through the whole hypothesis test. Shame on me. Uh, you're like, you didn't do this for once. But I'm going to. So here's the p-value. Uh, we can write everything around it. However... The reason I didn't drag you through it is I actually did this wrong on purpose. Notice I'm checking the constant variances of each of the groups. The actual assumption is on the residuals, not on the groups. Okay, it turns out if you do the math, it turns out that it's equivalent to doing that. But we want to be consistent knowing what we're actually testing. So this would be the Levine's test between the groups for the data not the residuals so let's do levine's test between the groups for the residuals uh we're going to use almost the same code you'll you'll see it's pretty easy uh so what is our h naught uh so we'll we'll keep it easy so constant variance across groups or varieties Okay, versus the uh, opposite, which is not constant variance across varieties. Okay, our significance level. Remember, we don't want to actually uh, reject this because that means things got to change. And we don't want things to change. So things are going pretty good. So I'm going to do 0 .001. Uh, our test statistic. Uh, is from psi pi stats using Levine. So anybody should be able to redo, reproduce this. Uh, decision rule, the same as always. And the reason I go over this every time is people forget what the decision rule is. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject h naught. And that's also why I change alpha every time. Um, I don't like 0.05. Uh, so let's see here. Execute. So this is where we'd actually write in our code and uh, get a p-value. So here, here's our Levines. 
But we need to just make it reflect the fact that we're not looking at fructose directly. We're looking at the residuals. Uh, FR1 LM dot resid. Okay. This will give me the residuals associated with variety A, variety B, and so on. So let me paste this. That's all you got to do is copy and paste over this first bit and run it. Okay. Uh, and sure enough, we run it and we can see uh, we get a p-value out of this, which is exactly the same as the other one which we would expect other equivalent tests okay uh, so we can make our decision since the p-value equals our number is greater than 0 0.001 which is equal to alpha we fail to reject H naught so we can write a conclusion insufficient evidence to claim the variances are not constant. Bingo. Done. All right, so this gives us, uh, kind of rounds out the one-way ANOVA approach. Uh, we'll look at two-way ANOVA later, but right now we're just trying to get done with one-way ANOVA, get through the basic types of analyses. Uh, so here we go. We have almost everything done, and we're ready to move on to the next video. And I'll see you there.